Hey everyone, how's it going? Pete here. And this morning we had a really fun trip down south uh, to the waterfall you may have seen in a previous video I did where I was testing out the DJI Osmo. I uh, went back down there with a couple of my best photographer friends to try and catch some early morning uh, beautiful golden light and uh, take some pictures of uh, this waterfall. And I wanted to demonstrate how to put together a real simple panorama uh, if you have uh, Lightroom CC, um, the Creative Cloud, which I'm sure a lot of you have. And some of you may not be familiar with this built-in feature. Uh, it's very easy these days to make a panorama. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, here's some panorama shots I shot this morning. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Now I made these shots with my camera on a tripod, but I didn't have an actual uh, a ball head set up to do panorama shots. So all I did was try to keep the horizon in the same shot throughout each image. Uh, ideally you want to rotate around the nodal point of the camera, that means rotating around the middle of the sensor so that uh, all the perspective stays exactly the same. But because I didn't have anything too close to the camera in this shot, it should work out pretty fine, although my angle of the horizon is just slightly off here. You can see it's flat here. In the next shot, it angles up a little bit, and uh, that's, I think, because I my the, the ground I was shooting from was not perfectly stable. Um, but, as you'll see, Lightroom should do a pretty good job at stitching it together, and then any other little problems with wonky horizons we can take into Photoshop and fix quite easily in there. So just to skip ahead I'll show you what my finished version looks like and um, here's one I have done one version of it as you can see I've gone uh, quite saturated strong colors in the skies which is actually pretty close to how it was. It had a really beautiful purpley orange kind of color light this morning it was just gorgeous so I really wanted to capture that um, and I haven't done any HDR or anything like that, just a simple panorama. Uh, I'll show you how to stitch, stitch it together and then some basic edits of what I've done to it. Okay, so let's get our bracketed, sorry, not bracketed, our panorama shots. So I've got from here to over here and all I'm going to do is uh, shift select them all like I just did now and I'm going to right click onto any one of the images and I'm going to come down here to Photo Merge Panorama. Okay, now it's going to uh, offer me some uh, options here for what kind of panorama I would like to make with the images. A spherical uh, panorama or a cylindrical. I usually leave it on spherical. Uh, a cylindrical just seems to stretch it out to a wider, a higher format. Um, and perspective is, I believe, if you're taking the images uh, moving from one position to another side by side, moving across the image, which is not what I generally do. Um, but the great thing about this is, once you finish making the panorama, it still stays in the DNG format, uh, which means you're still in RAW. You can still change the color balance, you can do selective color balance changes if you want to, and you've still got plenty of dynamic range to play with. Not uh, uh, unlike when you take it into Photoshop or some other panorama software, usually you're coming back to edit uh, what's left of the image in a JPEG format or a TIFF or maybe a PSD, something like that. So what I really love about this is it remains a DNG uh, or RAW format, so you've still got a lot of latitude to play with it. Okay, so Lightroom has is done uh, joining together our images now, as you can see, and uh, it's done a pretty good job. Uh, everything's pretty lined up, but the horizon, as I expected, is just a little bit wonky. So I'm just going to leave it as is, click merge and let it do its thing now, just take a few seconds and then it will import back into Lightroom and then we can continue on working with it. So as the images are right here, I haven't done anything to them. As you can see, they're just, uh, these are just raw Canon files straight out of the camera. Um, what I did was I exposed uh, so the sun wouldn't be totally blown out. There'd still be some detail in the sky. Uh, and then as I got around to the waterfall, I increased just about a quarter of a stop or half a stop, a bit more, just so I can get some more detail out of the uh, waterfall. Okay, so as you can see, it's just about done. And here it is now. It's created the panorama for me. So let's go ahead and have a look at it. 
and see what the image size is. Okay, it's 7,249 pixels long. Okay, so as it is now, it looks pretty good. If we zoom in, you can see um, Lightroom did a great job of stitching it together. There's no weirdness going on here. Uh, no funky um, join marks um, or anything like that. Um, the one issue I can see is on the horizon here. See, it's not straight. It's got a bend in it here. So I'm going to take it into uh, Photoshop to fix that. But first, I'm just going to do some simple adjustments with it. Okay, so I'm just going to go into develop mode real quick. Okay, and I'm just going to do a very quick basic edit. Bring up my exposure a little bit. I'm going to bring down some of the highlights. I'm editing here on the palette gear control board. Um, I'm not sure you can see that in the, my GoPro angle over here, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. But there are some definite issues with it. Uh, I'll be releasing a video shortly showing my thoughts on that. Okay, so I'll just leave it like that. The light was really orange. And now I'm just going to use the brush by pressing K shortcut key and I'm going to go and brush over the sky. All I'm going to do is just darken it ever so slightly, maybe a little bit of dehaze up just slightly to make it pop. And I'm going to turn up the temperature and the tint just a wee bit. Okay, I'm going to leave auto mask off for now. I'm going to use a pretty big brush. I'm just going to brush over the sky here. And uh, don't worry if you make if it's too intense or you don't like the, the tone, the dark, the brightness or the color, you can always come back and adjust it later. I'm just going to do a quick brush for now, staying away from the edges of the cliff for now. Okay, once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to turn on my auto mask and going to come back now, choose a smaller brush, and now I'm going to come back and paint along the edge of the cliff here. And with auto mask selected, you should be able to see that it's doing a pretty good job of selecting just the sky and it's not overlapping onto my cliff area, which I don't want to have. Okay, cool. There's a quick, just a quick job. Um, yep, yeah, I'll leave it there. If I hover over my little start mark here, you'll see it glow red and you'll see it's done a pretty good job of selecting uh, the sky and not going too much onto the rock. I have overlapped a little bit. Uh, you can go back and fix that later if you want to, but I'm happy with that for now. So I'm just going to turn off my uh, brush now and I may come in here clone out these camera bags I'm just going to come in with the Q button here and just quickly uh, paint over that okay and it's probably going to select somewhere weird like Lightroom generally does for some reason it's done a pretty good job okay I'm just going to drag it down here though excuse me for a moment while I take a sip of my tasty beverage Okay, I'm not going to worry about that other bag for now. That's not really the point of this video. Okay, now, finally, I'm just going to fix up that wonky horizon. You could leave it there if you want to, or do whatever adjustments you want to do to it. Um, I'm just going to take it to edit in Photoshop CC. And um, what I'm going to do to straighten out this horizon is use the Puppet Warp tool. Now, you may have some better ways of fixing a horizon. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to fix it. This is just one way. I know. Um, I'm not a Photoshop expert by any means. I'm just going to duplicate this base layer here and I'm going to create uh, a selection using the marquee tool. I'm just going to make a broad general selection around the middle of the horizon here because that's the main part I want to work on. Okay, and now I'm just going to come up to uh, image, is it? Sorry, edit uh, down to puppet warp. Okay, now I'm just going to select on a few points on this horizon, uh, like a control point. So one here, say one about here. If I can see any major errors in the horizon, I want to click kind of where those begin and start so I can adjust those. And I'm just going to put a control point at the end over here somewhere. Okay, now I find it a bit hard to see what I'm doing, excuse me, when I have all these funky lines on the screen. So I'm just going to use Command H to get rid of all those so I can just have my control points and what I'm going to do now is just drag them to where I want them. So I can see the main problem is with this one here. So I'm just going to grab this little fella and bring it up just a little bit. This may not be perfect but it should be good enough because I'm really quite anal about having my horizons straight or at least not all 
funky and wonky. I can't stand that. So I'm just going to do the best I can right now. I'm not going to spend too much time. I just want to give you an idea. And again, I'm sure a lot of you are pros out there at Photoshop. You probably know a better way to do it. This is just how I do it. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to press enter to let that do its thing. And, and now let's just turn off the layer, have a quick look. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was before. And let me just have a look at, I'll turn off the base layer now and see what damage or, not, or what parts of the image it's moved from my selection so that I can go back and just quickly uh, fix that. So this is a part of the image that's missing here. You can see it's white. If I zoom up, okay, there's some pixels missing there. It's not a huge problem if I'm just looking at it normal size here. When I turn on the back layer, when I merge it, it'll be pretty much camouflaged. But uh, I might just quickly create a, a uh, let's see, a layer mask here. And just come in with my brush tool and just kind of, whoop, that's a bit big. Sorry, undo that. Just come in here and just, I'm going to race around here, just smoothing out the edges. Um, it looks weird right now. I'm just going to go over this edge here and up the top. And here is no problem at all, so I'm going to leave that. So what that's done now is when I turn on this base layer again, it will have smoothed out the edges um, just so it's blended in better. And there's no harsh, straight, weird lines that um, give it away. I think, I did I miss a spot there? What's that over here? No. Oh, it's some water trickling down. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's just a quick, easy, nasty way to get it done. Now, uh, I could go in and work a little bit more on the horizon there. It needs a little bit more work, but I hope you get the idea. I'm going to flatten this image now. And I'm just going to click close, let it come back into Lightroom, and we'll have a final look at it. Okay, and have a look at before and after. Okay. So we're back in Lightroom now. So let's have a look. Um, we've come from, okay. So there's our DNG file that uh, Lightroom stitched for us. We took it to Photoshop and I just lifted up the horizon there, a couple of little, the end dropped down, as you can see over there. Now I just lift, lifted that up a little bit and there was a part in the middle there that was just sagging down a little bit as well. So I just pulled that back up into uh, a bit of a straighter line. So there we go, you can finish it there if you like, uh, or you can continue on because it's, well it's still a TIFF file, it's not as bad, it's not bad, uh, DNG is better, but so try and get as many edits uh, as you want to have done to it before you take it to Photoshop, I would say anyway. Um, again, I'm not a, a master at any of this, this is just the way I do it, um, and I think it works okay for me. So there we go, hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, I like colors to pop, so I brought in a bit of purple here. Oh, and one more thing, I did a little bit of dodging here over the rock because I thought it was a bit dark in the shadow. So I just got my brush and just brightened up this area here. Um, yeah, if that's too strong for your taste, so we can always just dial it back a wee bit, something like that maybe. Yeah, anyway, there we go. So I hope that answers um, any of your questions if you're wondering how to make a panorama or uh, perhaps you didn't know the feature was in Lightroom. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. It's made making panoramas just so much more fun and easy. And I love the panorama format. I have a few of them around up on my walls here. Absolutely love it. So get out there, give it a go. Um, you can even do these handheld. Just be careful to try and keep the horizon flat and in the same part of each image as you're moving around. And you want to overlap each image by about 20 to 30 percent. Okay. Uh, keep all your settings the same as well. Manual settings for everything. Um, and that will give you your best results. Okay, thanks very much. I'm Pete Leong, and uh, thanks for watching my little tip video, tutorial video today, and I hope to see you in a future video. Thanks. See ya.